wonderful folk out there, welcome back to my channel. Allow myself to introduce myself. I'm Lark, and in today's Fast Class, we're going to talk about what a music publisher does. So what does a music publisher do? A music publisher or publishing company distributes music. Class dismissed. Just kidding, get back here. So did you know that in the olden days, music publishers used to publish sheet music? Now that we have copyright laws, their role has significantly changed. So where does it all start? The relationship, roles and responsibilities between you and a music publisher are established via a publishing contract. In this contract, the person who owns the copyright assigns it to the music publisher. Some music publishers might provide you with an advance against future revenue. This is a loan that needs to be paid back via revenue from the songs. And or they can also receive a percentage of royalties, depending on the type of royalty and the type of publishing contract that you have. Be aware this can run up to as high as 50%. So make sure you get a lawyer to check out any contracts before you sign them so that you know you're receiving the best possible representation and financial terms. Once the retainer or loan has been paid back, the songwriter can start receiving a percentage of royalties. That percentage also depends on what's in your contract. What do they do in return? So they will then help manage the intellectual property of composers and they're responsible for the administration and exploitation, that doesn't sound good, but it is, of musical compositions to make sure you're protected and maximize the value of your music. They do lots of things like look after the acquisition and registration of copyright, licensing, collection and distribution of royalties and promotion of the compositions to artists, producers and other music industry professionals. Watch every fast class I've ever made to get up to speed on all of these things. So to break it down, they'll provide support in terms of managing finances and administration. They will license works to artists, labels and other third parties. The music publisher will receive royalties and then distribute those royalties as per what was agreed in the contract. The larger music publishers may have staff who are subject matter experts and professionals, including music supervisors and sub-publishers who can promote and market your music. They'll also keep an eye on copyright infringement and unauthorized use by others. They also manage the copyright of the master. I've done a few classes on what masters are, so make sure you check those out to see what they are and how they work. Publishers may also facilitate A&R, which stands for Artists and Repertoire. This means they'll seek out and set up co-writing opportunities and shop your music around to artists looking for songs to record and release. They'll also give you advice on how to make your songs more marketable, negotiate the split of royalties if there are multiple songwriters involved in writing a song, and pitch your song for sync opportunities. In terms of royalties, these are paid to publishers or record companies by performance and mechanical rights associations and then distributed to the composer. If you don't have a music publisher, these royalties will come straight to you as long as you've registered with your country's performing and mechanical rights associations. Make sure to watch my fast class on rights and royalties for a better understanding of what royalties are and how they work. So if you decide to go with a music publisher, there are a few ways to establish a contract. Number one, full publishing. This is where the publisher owns 100% of the copyright. Number two, co-publishing. This is where the songwriter and the publisher each own 50% of the copyright. Number three is administration. The songwriter owns 100% of the copyright and pays a set fee for specific services to be delivered by the publisher within an agreed time frame. These contracts can be very, very, very technical, often requiring a songwriter to write and deliver a set number of songs during the term of the contract. The contract will also set out a retention period for how long the copyright will remain with the publisher after the songs have been written and released or the music publisher can manage your current catalogue of songs that have already been written and released. Sometimes a publishing deal will come with a monetary advance. So this is essentially a loan from the publisher that will usually be earned back from revenue generated by the songs in the deal. 
After the loan is paid back, songwriters will keep a percentage of revenues earned. So these days, full publishing deals aren't as prominent as they were in the old days when record companies were the most common avenue for releasing music. In these modern times with digital distributors, you don't need a label to be able to release and distribute music. It's also very rare these days for a publisher to have a full ownership of your songs. So if you're thinking of seeking out a publishing deal, I recommend one where you retain full ownership of your copyright and pay a set fee for an agreed set of services within a set time frame. You can also build in a percentage of revenue streams into the contract because this will provide motivation for the publisher to get more opportunities and therefore more revenue for your works. If you make more money, they make more money. At the end of the day, you don't need a music publisher. If you've got the time, skills, contacts, and money, then it is something you can manage yourself. But in saying that, I manage all my music myself, and it is a lot. A music publisher will also bring things to the table that you don't have, including connections with industry contacts and music supervisors and directors, they can also give you invaluable exposure to the right people and audiences, which will in turn increase your royalties and revenue. It's also good to have someone in your corner who you can trust, who has music industry knowledge and skills that you won't have. And also as a new set of ears to give you constructive feedback and support. So they'll be looking at things through a different lens. And the one thing that is important to remember is that the music business is a business. At the end of the day, these businesses are looking for commercial viability and revenue potential. If you're an indie artist who isn't generating a lot of revenue, this may not be attractive to a business that makes income from revenue and royalties. One way that these small indie artists can boost their revenue is through sync. One song in a TV ad or an Apple TV show could be just the boost you need. Make sure to watch my fast class on sync. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next fast class. Oh,